what's like a pair of glasses, has something to do with fossils, and influences every single scientist in the world, give up? Worldview! Not only does Worldview influence every single scientist in the world, it influences you too. Worldview is like a lens through which you view the world. If you're looking through a red lens, everything around you looks red. But if you're looking through a blue lens, everything around you looks blue. In a similar way, your worldview colors the way you view the world around you. Worldview also helps us determine how we answer life's most important questions, like, who am I? Where did I come from? What is true? And what is false? The two most important questions related to your worldview are, does God exist? And if so, what is my response to him? Let's find out where our worldview comes from. The way we look at the world is influenced by many different things. The values we learn from our families, what we learn at school, the opinions of our friends, what we watch and listen to. It's easy to pick up the ideas of our culture without even noticing it. But it's important to carefully and intentionally choose the worldview that will guide our lives and influence the choices we make. Let's take a look at two different worldviews. First, the biblical worldview. The early Christians had a biblical worldview, but not long after the time of Jesus, they began to allow ideas from the pagan culture around them to influence what they believed and how they lived. Before long, human ideas and traditions had become more important than the Bible, at least for some people. However, about 500 years ago, a group of Christians protested the elevation of human ideas and traditions above the Bible. Because of their protest, they were called Protestants. Because they believed that the Bible is the highest authority and that no human idea should ever be considered equal to Scripture or placed above Scripture, Protestants eventually separated from the rest of the Christian Church. There are many Protestant churches today, the Methodists, the Baptists, and many others. Seventh-day Adventist Christians are Protestants who still believe that God has revealed His truth in the Bible. We look to the Bible for the answers to life's most important questions. Who am I? And where did I come from? I am a child of God, created in His image. Where did evil come from? The Bible tells the story of Satan's rebellion and how he tempted Adam and Eve to sin. Does God have a solution to the sin problem? Yes. If we accept God's gift of salvation, we will once again live in a perfect world like the one He originally created. Looking to the Bible to answer life's most important questions means that we have a biblical worldview. The lens which we look through to interpret the world around us is the Bible. All Christians should think seriously about how their worldview affects the way they live. But scientists especially have lots of opportunities to think about this. Why? because there are many ideas in science today that conflict with what the Bible teaches. These ideas that conflict with what the Bible teaches are based on a different worldview that has influenced science for centuries. It's called naturalism, and it became influential during the rise of modern science. These two worldviews have more in common than you might think. Both worldviews would agree that nature can be studied and understood because it follows predictable laws that we can figure out by observation and experimentation. Both would agree that on a day-to-day -day basis, natural processes happen because of these laws, not because of magic or the gods. And both would agree that science can only test things that we can perceive with our five senses. But there's something that a biblical worldview and a naturalistic worldview disagree on, and it makes a huge difference. Scientists with a naturalistic worldview will not consider the possibility that God has ever intervened in our history. Scientists with a biblical worldview will. But wait, if God had intervened in our history, would that be testable? I thought all scientists agreed that science can only test things that we perceive with our five senses. Good point. If God had intervened in the past, say, at creation or the flood, it would not be testable scientifically because it is not observable or repeatable. But if we believe, for example, that the worldwide flood described in the Bible really happened, it could suggest some research that could be done using the scientific process to study things that we can perceive with our senses. So, even though divine intervention is outside the realm of empirical science, clues left behind by something like the flood can be studied scientifically. Dr. Leonard Brand is a biologist and paleontologist from Loma Linda University, whose worldview has really helped him in his scientific research. How important is a scientist's worldview? A person's worldview has a very great effect on how they function as a scientist. 
Dr. Brand, tell us about your worldview. I subscribe to the, the worldview that starts with the Bible. And that helps me to understand the world, to explain why things are the way they are, how they came to be the way they are. Uh, if we take the biblical worldview, uh, where we're, we're um, accepting the possibility that, that there really was a, a global catastrophe and, and other things like that, it influences what you see. In the southwestern United States, a giant rock layer called the Coconino Sandstone stretches across much of northern Arizona. It is well exposed in the Grand Canyon. In the Hermit Basin of the Grand Canyon, hundreds of animal trackways have been preserved. Traditionally, scientists have thought that these tracks were made on desert sand dunes. When I study these trackways, I notice evidence that's, that's hard to explain if these were on desert sand dunes, which is what most geologists would, uh, how they would explain these, these sandstones. They're desert sand dunes. Um, but I saw features that, that you can't explain if they're in a desert sand dune. It can only be explained if the animals are underwater and are sort of buoyed up by the water. Tracks on the sandstone plates that are not always regular trackways. They're, they're just a print here, a print there. Well, how could that be if the animals are in a desert supported by the sand? Uh, but then I saw other things. I saw tracks, trackways with the animal walking with his toes always pointing this way, but the trackway was actually going this way, sideways. How can that be? Animals don't walk that way. So they really point to underwater, uh, animals walking underwater. To discover the conditions under which the tracks were formed, Dr. Brand designed experiments that could be done in the laboratory. Several dozen salamanders and lizards were used to produce trackways on dry sand, moist sand, wet sand, and underwater sand. And it turns out with these salamanders walking on the sand, the current will sometimes drift them sideways. So they're trying to walk this way, but the current is drifting them this way. When these tracks were compared with the tracks found in the Coconino sandstone, the ones most like the fossil tracks were those produced underwater. The data indicate that the Coconino sandstone was deposited under wet conditions, not the dry sand dune conditions usually described. It sounds like Dr. Brand's biblical worldview and belief in the global flood of Genesis helped him notice things other scientists had missed. Why haven't other people found these things? Well, if you already know what the explanation is, then you'll, you'll miss things that don't fit that explanation. They just won't catch your attention. But my worldview uh, it introduces new ways of thinking, kind of opens up new possibilities. And I saw that and I knew that was important. And so your worldview influences what you're going to notice. If we look carefully, we will see things that others are missing. That's the effect of a biblical worldview. It sounds like your worldview can actually give you a bit of a head start in figuring out the truths about the things we see around us. If you have the right worldview, you're going to make faster progress in, in understanding how to explain things. But if we, if we let the Bible open our thinking to new possibilities, then we notice things that other people will not see. Let's review. Every scientist is influenced by his or her worldview. Worldview can especially influence the questions a scientist is willing to ask. Although both naturalistic and biblical worldviews agree on certain basic assumptions, naturalism will not consider the possibility that God intervened in human history. Scientists with a biblical worldview will. Because of this, a biblical worldview can suggest ideas for valid scientific research and can even give scientists a little head start as they seek for accurate explanations to the data we see around us.